This is PSR J0337 plus 1715, a triple star system located 4200 light years away in the constellation of Taurus. It consists of a millisecond pulsar spinning nearly 366 times per second, orbited by a very low mass puffy white dwarf in a tight 1.63 day orbit. The pair are in turn orbited by an undetected and presumably older and dimmer white dwarf with a mass approximately 40% that of the Sun, whose orbit lasts about 11 months and is located only about 18% further from the inner binary than the Earth is from the Sun. Just imagine the violence that this system has gone through and imagine that in 2022, a lunar mass planet was discovered orbiting the trinary. More on that later. Firstly, how did such an extreme stellar system come together and in such a small space? There have been several theories attempting to explain the formation of this insane system. But the most accepted theory goes like this. Many eons ago, the PSR J0337 plus 1715 system forms as a triple system, consisting of an 8 solar mass B-type star orbited by a pair of smaller, more sun-like main sequence stars, themselves in a relatively wide orbit around each other. The massive B-type star expands into a red supergiant and its thick stellar wind slows down the outer binary, which slowly spirals inwards, destabilizing the supergiant's outer layers, revealing a 2.4 solar mass helium star, formerly the core of the supergiant. As the outer binary spirals in, it breaks apart due to tidal forces from the primary. The lighter star spirals into an orbit with the helium star, leaving the heavier main sequence star of the now destroyed outer binary on larger orbit around the pair. The main sequence star in the inner binary strips matter off the helium star into an accretion disk with jets coming off the poles, exacerbating the helium star's mass loss, revealing a massive white dwarf at its former core. The inner binary is much closer together by this point. The outer main sequence star now expands into a red giant, and the inner binary now feeds on its outer layers, pulling them away and revealing a small helium white dwarf. Some of the mass pulled away is piled on top of the white dwarf making it exceed the Chandrasekhar limit and go through a type 1a supernova, producing the neutron star we observe today. Finally, as the main sequence star in the inner binary starts to evolve off the main sequence, its outer layers expand. However, they are very quickly siphoned away by the neutron star, producing another very light, low mass white dwarf, which we observe today as the inner puffy white dwarf. This is probably the most eventful formation history for any known star system as of now. And such an intricate theory is needed to explain such an extraordinary system. Believe it or not, this system is actually a crucial testing ground for Einstein's equivalence principle, one of general relativity's most crucial ideas, which states that gravitational and inertial masses of an object must be the same. And so, it is impossible to distinguish between an inertial force due to acceleration and a gravitational force resulting from the curvature of space-time by mass. The strong equivalence principle is an extension of this, stating that the same principle also applies to self-gravitating objects like neutron stars. A 2019 analysis of pulsar timing variations from PSR J0337 plus 1715 over six years found zero violation of this principle and any difference between the inertial and gravitational mass of the pulsar than 0.00026%, which is pretty good, and a percentage is a thousand times smaller than previous strong field tests. So as of now, Einstein's theory still hold up fine, even in extreme environments such as this. What if I were to tell you that in the midst of these extraordinary environments, a 2022 paper concluded that a small residual signal incompatible with noise, is likely caused by a planet orbiting the system. This currently unconfirmed planet, or dwarf planet, is likely around the mass of the moon, or maybe slightly more massive, and orbits the entire triple system every 3000 days or so. With its tiny object included, the model fits the observed data much better than without it. What would such an immensely alien world in such an alien environment even be like? Given its very small mass, there is no doubt that it is a rocky world, and likely a barren, cratered one too, as it has witnessed a supernova, which may have also washed away its previous features. And given that the system has lost about 80% of its original mass, 
the planet likely somehow migrated to its current position from further inside the system, indicating it may have been much warmer in the past, and so is likely free of any volatiles or ices. So, this planet likely resembles a much colder, smaller, and perhaps smoother Mercury. From where in this system this planet originated, I do not know, and it doesn't seem like there are many places where a planet could survive for so long and then end up here. But I don't think that's up to me to judge. In any case, the existence of a planet within this extreme system would make it even richer than it already is. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more space content.